know what I'm going to do while we have a bit of spare time? I'm going to take the rest of this rot to the barn. And we'll turn this into fertilizer too. I'm living in the so-called uh, temperate climate. So far today was rain, hail, sun, fog. Either I have the wrong definition of tempered or somebody didn't uh, win a spelling bee many years back. Yeah, we, uh, I, we woke up this morning to quite a bit of snow on the ground and it gave me a hell of a headache. Whenever the weather changed, I was getting a headache last night actually, so I guess that was the start of the pressure change. And then, yeah, this morning it was tons and tons of snow. Well, not tons and tons, but it's covered everything again. It only just all melted away, and once again, it covered everything. Oh, I have a crappy mushroom, that's right, I need to put that in the fertilizer as well. Can try to compost this into rot. There we go. One piece of leather. Wow, and look at that. Like, doing... That one field, 25 spaces of field uh, to both fertilize and then sow seeds, has damn near destroyed one leather bag. It's crazy. Well, I'm gonna grab all of those and make more of them. Nope. That leather away. These go in resource storage as well. That's for now, ignore the sticks. Just to the straw for now. I suppose I can put the hose away now as well. And yeah, the hoe also practically destroyed. In fact, the hoe and the um, bag wore down at almost the same rate. Interesting. What time of day is it? It's getting a bit late. We can't see the sun, but it's out there somewhere. Getting low. Time for me to deal with food. We'll do this. Let's see, what do we have plenty of? There's still loads of mushroom soup. Roasted meats. I could take some wood plates, these roast meats and these onions, take these bowls. Oh, I didn't buy carrots. It's a chunk of raw meat and the cabbages. And I'll make some potage. Do we have kitchens yet, by the way? Kitchen building. We have a smithy. Yes, we do! We have kitchens! Oh, hell. Get this built first. Or anything else, the kitchen uh, needs to go in here somewhere. Wherever I can put it. There are obstacles blocking. I think it's that outcropping of rock. I kind of want it to just be... Well, I guess we can set it back a little bit. Yeah. And then I can go out there and into here and cook and go back again instead of running all the way down to my house. That takes time. Boom. Okay, so cauldron. I can only make one meat and gravy, apparently. Today was my physical therapy day and everything hurts. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully, you know, you feel better through the day. Maybe a soak in the bath or something. Make potage. I can make three of those. I'm standing as well with my fur boots practically on the edge of the fire. What a dumb idea I'm doing. Looks like the snow outside is stopping. Very, very thin right now. I think 
Oh, it looks like the maintenance guys are here. I can just see them parked out there. So they should be clearing the snow soon. And scrambled eggs. We need to buy eggs and uh, scramble the shit out of them. Okay, I'm almost... That's, that's why I'm almost out of onions. But I will eat a rye bread. That practically filled me. A hard day in the field. I say field, singular, because... <laughs> We don't have that many. Um, you know, I'm going to shove all that in there. I'm going to take 50 of the meat. Let's see. Why haven't they stacked up? That's weird. Probably because they were made on a different day. I'll put all the potage in here. All the roast meats. Wooden plate back. And the last two onions. So we need, next shopping trip, we need to do carrots and onions, by the look of it. Oh, and the cabbages are here. We're probably going to need cabbages too. Eventually we'll have our own that we're growing. If I, A, had a bathtub and B, were able to use said bathtub, I'd be um, a living mermaid. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that, though. You know, that uh, the physical therapy day and you're in pain and so on. We should put a pathway in here, I think. Um, carry on with this path here. But yeah, hopefully you feel better uh, very soon, you know, like, or at least the pain lessens. If it's one of those cases where there's no end in sight, then okay, but said as, as long as the pain gets more manageable, build the path up to here, because we've got to bring it out from, well, I imagine as well, especially for yourself, it's probably more a case of, you know, it's about, is it manageable rather than is it gone, right? Yeah, easy answer. You have bad days and less bad days, exactly. Okay, what do I need to do while well, we still have a little bit of light? I need to um, maybe make the foundation for this if I can. Oh, actually, we haven't finished this house either. What about the logs? Are there logs in here? There are eight logs in here. Need four. Oh, and we we're gonna go and dry some meat. Duh. Let me finish this this house, and then I'll have a run over to the hunting hut. We will. Boom! There we go. A new house for a new resident. When I find somebody. But now we'll have a run over to the hunting hut and go dry the meat. When we build the kitchen, it is very disappointing that there isn't a drying rack in there for the meats. Like, to dry meat. That would be nice. So all the meat... Oh, I'm just running through my crops. Damn. All the meats end up over there now. Or, like, the, the hunters carry them over there automatically. Oh, like, speaking of, how's it going, Sully Ghost? Wow. Wow, my dude. Just straight up ghosting me? Okay. Fuck you too. We have meat. What kind of storage can I build? Oh, I keep forgetting. By the chest scheme. Costs a lot of money. I could make barrels. I'm just thinking to make like a, an area around the crafting zone over here. Like maybe in front of the workshop. 
and I can put everything here that I'm going to sell. You know what I mean? And then it's all in one place and I can come and pick it all up and drop it all off, so yeah. Dropping a bunch of barrels in there would be a good idea. But barrels require planks, right? How many? Six planks a piece and I get two per log. I need at least three logs to make one plank. And we already have a plank still. Logs at least to make one. Over here. Barrels than alcohol! We need a tavern, but eventually, yes, you can uh, brew beer and stuff. You can brew alcohols. One of the things we'll have to do um, is, as we unlock the, uh, the technology production, I guess, under here, as we unlock further technologies, get... Oh, it's over here. Like, we've got Workshop 1, and we can make wooden cups and ladles and vials and so on. And get Workshop 2 eventually. And Workshop 2 will have a clay working station in it. And we can make um, clay vials and mugs and so on, and jugs and vases. I think Workshop 3, we can make beer bottles, mead bottles, wine bottles. So yeah, we would have to have people making that kind of stuff for us. Or make it ourselves. So more workstations get added as you upgrade these and they get covered in more. So yeah, and then you need to supply those to the tavern. Supply them with, say, wheat grain, oat grain, and um, rye and so on. And they make beer, uh, supply them with fruits and they can make the wines. Treat yourself to a mushroom pizza. Nice. I mean, not nice because I don't like mushrooms, but I'm glad you enjoy them. <laughs> so, yeah. Treating yourself is always good. Alright, here we go. Uh, barrel. Where are we going to put this? This is the path coming in, and it forks around there. I'm going to put it here, because I'm probably going to want to... ends of some sort in here them in the future. Put a barrel there, and I'm going to stick all this dried meat in there. We were just talking about mushrooms earlier, actually, because the whole forest in autumn in this game gets filled with multiple types of mushrooms, and we've been making mushroom soup. Alright, this needs eight. And I was just saying about how, personally, I'm not a big fan of mushrooms. Most of the time, I would rather not have them. Um, but sometimes I can kind of, I want to say, trick myself into eating them, <laughs> as long as I'm just not thinking about it. And that, like, say in a restaurant, in the past I've had, like, um, grilled or fried mushrooms with a steak. And they've usually done, like, this one place that we used to go to did the mushrooms like they'd toss them into the, uh, the pan with the steak with all the juices in and saute them quickly and that so they caramelized a bit. Then I was happy to eat those sometimes. Other times I'd only eat about half of them and then my brain goes, what are you doing? And I have to stop. Taste is subjective and I'm sure you uh, like things I find yucky. Uh, you have a, a blind guess calamari? I do actually like calamari, yeah. so yeah, like you say, taste is subjective. There's no, like, one food is just bad and one food is good, right, in this world. It's a case of people like what they like, and I, I do like calamari. I like oatmeal as well. Uh, Shy doesn't, but uh, for a long while since I moved here, uh, we didn't bother buying any, but eventually I was like, mm, I'm really craving some oatmeal breakfast, so I said, look, I'm going to go to the store and buy some. And um, yeah, she won't eat it, but I'll have it. Everything edible can be good and can be bad, depends on how it's made. That's true as well, to an extent, but even then, I think there's some foods, like, no matter how well they're made, 
you would never be able to get somebody to eat them. Just that there's certain things that they just absolutely can't get past, or the taste doesn't work for them, even if it's like somebody says, this is really good, and it's like, look, I don't like that kind of flavor, you know? So, yeah. Right, sleep time. All right. Well, we need to wait for more logs to get done. Either that or I've got to pull my axe out and go chop a few trees down, and I don't want to do that. So, um... I have one last quick check in here for anything we can sell. In fact, I know what we can do. I'm going to sell these bags. They're going to be useful for... Actually, I'm going to... Maybe... No. I'm only going to get one bag out of that batch, aren't I? Take a couple of them and save one. And I'm going to grab a whole mess of sticks. Maybe 80 of them? And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a load of these. Wicker baskets. We'll sell these. You have a personal opinion. Most taste, taste is cultural upbringing and early impressions of taste. That is actually true. As well. You, you, I, I would agree with you there. Because... Um, it depends how you're fed as a child as well, I suppose. And... You know, I, I don't know how to explain it properly. Um, how would I put this? You can put a child off of food by being in, or, or by personally not liking it yourself, or saying to them, like, when they're a little kid, and a kid's like, oh, what's that? You know, like, you know, when you're out eating or whatever, or there's food on somebody's plate and they don't know what it is. They've never had it before. And then the parent says, oh, this, oh, I don't think you'll like this. That is one of, to me, that's one of the, the, the silliest things I hear parents say <laughs> to their kids. You're not going to like it. Immediately they're like, oh, why not? And in their brain, you kind of convince them that they're not going to like it. But that's That can be a part of it. it doesn't, it's not all the time. It's not a hard and fast rule. Speaking of mushrooms, let's grab some of these red pines. We do need them. And we need uh, the other types as well. The, the bullets. Where are they? Over here, plenty of parasols. I'm not... But yeah, that, that a lot of it can be psychological, and um, some of it's cultural, like what you grow up around. What do you just take for granted as like this is normal food because we had it every day growing up, and it's because it's what looks, you know, uh, more available or affordable or a mix of both, you know. But yeah, telling a kid that they won't like a certain food is a guaranteed way to actually get them to not like it. Or making a fuss, or, or feeding it to them and giving them a kind of a weird look while, they, while they're chewing on it. You immediately make them think, why, what's wrong with it? And they, they want to spit it out. Whereas, a long time ago, um, I was in a relationship uh, with a woman from Germany, and she came over, uh, she had a baby, you know, she had a little, well, not a baby, she was a toddler uh, from a previous relationship. And we went out for food, and I was surprised. You know, and this was one of the things that started to make me think about this. I was surprised when we went out for a meal, and she ordered fajitas, and we put the baby in the uh, high chair and everything, and she was just handing her pieces of food off of her uh, fajita plate. You know, because we didn't have anything for, like, the kid to eat, but she apparently always ate whatever her mum ate. So, <laughs> you know. She was just handing her, like, slices of bell pepper. And I was looking like, really? She's eating that? And she'd look at me and say, yeah, because she just eats whatever I eat. I don't make a fuss. You know, I don't fuss over whatever kind of food is available and she'll just eat it because if she sees me eating it she knows it's fine so yeah little things like that it's surprising how that little psychological element comes into it but at the same time not surprising 
these, yeah. I liked Brussels sprouts as a kid and it was a pain uh, to all the table because I always asked for the biggest portion. <laughs> nice. Yeah, sprouts is one of those divisive... There's a lot of people are like, ew, I don't like it, and other people are like, dude, it's the best. I can take them or leave them. It depends how they're cooked. I don't like them when they've been steamed or boiled. Ugh. But I've had them, like, sliced in half and grilled or, or roasted. They're quite nice. I don't have them often, though, because other people didn't like them that way. The people who, li who liked sprouts in our households didn't like them that way. So that was a conflict. <laughs> like, you know, who likes one type of food in one way versus another way? Oh, so, yeah. It's how my nephew thinks of food. Uh, brother is really good cook and uh, his son says 80% of the time he gets something new and doesn't like it. Uh, like he's had it before. Yeah. That's that's like, I don't like that. It's like, how do you know you've never had it? But I don't like it. Never had it. How do you know? <laughs> okay, we've got a poisonous mushroom. I'm going to sell that because I don't care about that. I'm going to sell all this dried meat to a clothing vendor. Um... I have two spare leather. Back. Um, what else do we got? Wicker baskets. Sell those. And sell the... Where are the... Simple bags. There we go. I'm like, where were those bags I made? Simple bags. Did I not make any more bags? I thought I had enough... Oh, no, I had enough leather for one. Did I actually keep that? I should have had three bags. I think I put the oh, I put three leather back, kept two from the five we had, and didn't make a bag out of it because I was too busy making baskets. Shit. <laughs> Duh. Okay, what we need as well is probably some kind of winter stuff. A uh, fur hood, maybe? Which is that? 555 coin? Fuck. Okay. Well, it's getting it's cold. Easy. I need, uh, need a little bit of extra clothing. Uh, fur hood. There we go. Looking good. But we don't have much money now. I spent pretty much all of it. Actually, who are, um, who are the, uh, the, uh, the settlers looking for a place around here? Dude's good at farming, hunting, diplomacy. Whoa. Wilderbert. You are terrible. But Wilderbert over here. Got all the skills. And we do have a home. I mean, I could put him on hunting duty for now. Get him, but we're already getting plenty of food, and that just means I've got to supply them with tons more knives. I think I should get back there, actually, and make sure that they have knives. Now I made a bunch, but they seem to be going through them at a rate of like two or three knives a day. Which is ridiculous. Some days he says he hates something that he liked a week ago. Oh yeah, well that's kids all over. You know. At one, at one point I used to like uh, carrots and then I suddenly didn't want them when I was a kid. And I mean I have them now because I'm, I'm a grown up, but it was that and sausages are my favourite food. And... At one point, I I couldn't eat them. I just could not. Couldn't deal with it. My brain was like, ugh. But I'd had them for years growing up, and then I stopped I stopped liking them when I got to like seven years old, eight years old. And then one day I woke up and I was like, I want sausages. <laughs> Is this weird? Yeah. We had a house rule, every dish needs to be tried once. That's a good rule, yeah. No questions or judgments before, and it's like, and if you still don't like it afterwards, then okay, you know. But try it first. Yeah, I tried to expand my food horizons, you know, many years ago, trying new things. Try and calamari was one of them, actually, to come back to that. Calamari was one of the foods where I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm not going to, you know, judge whether I'm going to like it or not before I try it. I know it's squid, but I'm going to try it. And I had it. And again, the parental thing at the, t at the dinner table while we were out eating, 
at this place, my parents looked at me like, you're going to order that, but you might not like it. And I was like, I want to try it. I don't know if I like it until I try it. And they were like, okay, but, it, you know, it's squid, right? And it's like, it's like they're trying to turn you off it instead of encouraging you to uh, go ahead and just try something new. Sausage, yes. Oh, hey, Dalinar. Sorry, I did not see you redeem Take a Drink. Thank you very much, Dalinar. How are you today? Ah. Guess I've been talking a lot. Need to take a swig. Alright, all this stone we gathered is going to get turned into knives, I guess, or most of it. That'll keep my hunters in knives for a while. How are we doing for axes? Three stone axes left still? Okay, we're good. Three stone knives left. Okay. That's encouraging. Of all this... Nine knives. <laughs> You're gonna be good for knives for a while. Ah, the snow has returned. That's got to be disheartening for the uh, groundskeepers who showed up. <laughs> they waited for it to ease off. They showed up, probably to get the snowblowers out and, you know, the shovels and start clearing the pathways around the buildings. And then more snow. Welcome to Alberta. Heavy. We're going to take the last of this rot, put it on the farmer's table, and turn that into fertilizer. And that's all the rot. Remember all the fertilizer we made last stream? All the berries we collected and dumped into uh, compost bins? Yeah, that got us a lot of fertilizer. I'm preparing for the future here. We now have lots of it. We used 25 of it as well on the farm plot over here. This is our actual farm plot. One of the things we can do, I, I should probably do it now, in the management screen, you can actually specify what you want plants to be. So that when, you know, I can say to them like, no, actually, we're going to put carrots in. And I can draw out carrots on this field. And it will tell the farmers that I have, specifically, this is a carrot field only plant carrots here, but this is a wheat. So I'm going to give a, a custom name just so I know. Um, it needs to have this built. One stone left in my inventory. Bonk. Okay. Stone. That's not a priority though. That is. I need logs for that. Look, dinner. Enjoy your inti. Enjoy the pizza. Have a good one. And I hope you, uh, hope the pain eases for you as well. Alright. Yeah, I put the, I put the leather away, um, <laughs> that I had. That was silly. What else do we have to throw in? We got all the stone knives. Got a stone axe that we picked up on the road a couple of days ago. I forgot all about that. And the mushrooms and stuff can go in the food storage. Just want to empty out the... Oh, oh crap. Uh, do you need to do cyclical plant swapping? I don't think so. Um, I don't think you need to rotate crops, if that's what you're talking about. You know, so, so that you don't, like, over... Um, over farm one particular type of crop and it like saps out all the nutrients of one particular type. I don't think you need to rotate crops. It's just a case of, you know, if ever you like, it's, it's more for the automation process in the game. If you put a field down and you have farmers sitting in the farmer's hut, they're not going to do a damn thing with it until you tell them what crops to plant. So rotate crops, just rotate in your head, then, in your hand. Then yes, you can do that. Cap, it's a nice mushroom. It's poison. We don't want. 
Um, what are we going to do? We, we need logs. Cooking place. I want to build the kitchen. If anything, building the kitchen and hiring somebody who's good at production would be a good idea. And they can actually do the food cooking as well, and I don't need to focus on that. Then we can worry about a farmer. I don't know which way around we want to do this. What would be best first? I'm quite liking the, the slow emerging layout of this town, though. It's looking good. Hey, six plank. Six logs, sorry. There we go. And we're going to obviously need sticks and logs for all of this shit. Let's go get the sticks that we need. Uh, the straw. It'd be really impressive if they had crop rotating uh, in-game, but also really painful. Oh yeah, it would be um, very difficult. Like, it would add a layer of management, I think, that I don't think the game developer is shooting for. Oh, do we have straw in here as well? We have some. Alright, I'm going to need to go down to the river and get some more, but first we need to eat. I'm going to eat a meat with grape. And I should drink some water. Come on. Come on. You were there a minute ago. Oh my god, really? There we go. Oh, uh, if I can't make the crosshair dot actually go to the crafting menu part of the model, then yeah. I'm gonna go to first person for this bit. Gather up more reeds down here. I don't know about you guys as well, but I was having a lot of fun with the Cult of the Lamb on on Saturday. That was that was good. Really fun game. And we'll be playing more of it tomorrow. So, don't miss it. You can use the Twitch extension to join the cult. Um, I think we have now three viewers in the cult. Pretty cool. And you can use channel points to contribute to the totem and it gives us rewards and so on. You get little events every now and then where you can help or hinder. If they allowed a schedule of a full cycle of crops, that would be uh, not so bad. But if you had to micromanage it, you... One thing crosses my mind every so often, uh, take any named city, then roll back uh, time to the first settlement and want to be there. That would be interesting, yeah. Like, what did, it, what did it look like when it got started? And to imagine it going from something that probably looked a bit like this, like a handful of people coming in, putting up a few wooden huts, you know, even no matter what age it was uh, at that time, it was like a thousand years ago, or whether it was like 200 years ago, we go from that to being a massive city that stretches way off over the horizon. Pretty, pretty interesting to think about it that way. Swattle wall here. One up here as well, by the look. Sticks in. Straw. And we'll get the straw here. Really, that little corner piece there is going to be a separate piece? Wow, I'm glad I grabbed a lot of straw. Roof looked a complicated shape. Oh, that did both. So it does that slope to all those ones. Okay, cool. By the way, we'll figure how to use the lamb extension. Um, I see uh, it popping on the screen, but I don't see uh, much to interact there. Um, okay, uh, when you say you see it popping on the screen, do you mean you see 
like, I'm just going to go to a pause menu, my mouse around. You mean you see a little box over here somewhere? Because if that's what you mean, then that just means the extension is an overlay that's active. Um, there won't be anything popping up unless I'm playing the game. But what will happen when I'm playing the game is every now and then, due to events in the game, we can get a new potential uh, member of the cult. So when they're available, I go over to the actual member of the, uh, like the uh, potential member of the cult and I click on them to be like, okay, now you can join us. And then what it will do is at the bottom part of the screen down here, um, like a big shadowy box thing will fill like maybe bottom third of the screen. It will like extend out from the bottom and it will say enter raffle or cancel. Something like that. If you click enter raffle, what it will do is it will add you to a raffle where I can then draw multiple people out. Like you know, several people can all join the raffle. And then I'll click a button on my end on the game that says close raffle. And it will pick a random name from the people who entered and it will name the cultist after that viewer. But you also then get a new pop out that shows like a little character creator and you can change the look and color and so on of your character so you can personalize it a little and then that cultist then runs off and you know does its own thing right so yeah join tomorrow so you can sacrifice me yes do make sure as well that you can only do it on the browser um, you can't do it on the mobile app or on like the Twitch app on say, um, you know, a TV or a console or something. It doesn't work there, unfortunately. But as long as you're on the browser and as long as you don't have any like pop-up blocking, script blocking type extensions, you may need to turn those off. It should work, but we, we had a couple of people who were having trouble seeing the pop-up. Like, every time I tried to do a new raffle, it didn't pop out. So, they they could see the little box that you see, but they couldn't actually interact with anything that came up. Like, nothing showed up for them. So that, that was a bit of a shame. In my experience, the pop-up box looks very similar to the game, so you had it mistaken as in-game content. Yes! That's a good point. I thought that as well when I started watching a Cult of the Lamb stream and that popped up. I didn't know it was for me to do something with at first. I was like, what is this? I thought it was something on the um, streamer's end until eventually I realized when I moved my mouse over it, I was like, oh, okay, that's for me. What is this? You know, so I was confused by that. But what I'll do is I'll demonstrate it again when I'm streaming it tomorrow, I will actually go in and demonstrate it. Okay, what are we going to do for the last little bit of daylight today? Um, have the barn done. Need more logs in order to finish the kitchen. And we've got a farmer's shed and a house to build. No point putting down another farm plot, although I suppose... I could map it out. Hmm. I feel like I want to do it from here. And we can extend the farm plots down towards the road, maybe. Would be better. Let's make a space between them as well. And we can run a path between them. One, two, three. for now. Boom. So that's another field. This can be, say, carrots, because they can get planted in the winter as well. Hmm. We're all the way up to the berries already. Hmm. Where else could we put another farm? I could put it. Yeah, couldn't I? We also need to plant cabbages. Oh, 
was that? Okay. Then there's going to be another wheat field in here. And another carrot field down here. And just extending further down towards the road. Go fishing. We could. The fishing in this game is kind of rubbish. Sadly, they don't have a good fishing minigame. You literally just swim in the, into the river and chase fish around <laughs> uh, with a wooden spear. And it's kind of pointless and boring. It's better off, actually, you can get a fishing hook. We're not there yet. We're close to unlocking it, though. And then I can hire people and then they can do that for me. <laughs> or you can also put um, fishing nets down and they will randomly catch fish. Same as if I put down, like, hunting traps. But you can only put one down at a time and it's really silly. Sadly, the fishing isn't a good thing. What we could do, we could plot out fences. Um, I, can't aff I can't even afford to buy the plans for a fence. Well, never mind. Well, okay, let's check on the food situation. Get some ladies to populate the village. We probably should actually at some point start courting somebody. Because if we die <laughs> without an heir, we can't actually uh, replay, like, carry on playing. So when we die, if we have an heir, then we play as them instead, which is pretty cool. But if you die without one, you're dead. Going to sleep, see you, Wolfie. Have funsies. Thank you, Yorana. Have a good night. Sleep well. Uh, what was I going to do? I just totally forgot. Where am I? Oh, yeah, food. I'm getting old. I forget things. 55 of that. We're good for other stuff for now. I'm going to pull another meat with gravy out. I'll put the one plate back. Ah, uh, let's go to the thingy place. Yeah. Hunting hut. That's the word I was looking for. Dry some meat. It still hurts. Mm. I also feel a little queasy today, for some reason. We made, uh, well, I made nachos last night for dinner, and they were good, but later in the evening, my stomach didn't feel, not, not upset, just not happy, <laughs> if, they, if, they, if you get my meaning. My stomach felt not happy, like a little gurgly and, um, you know, no pain or anything, just a little gurgly and almost a bit like acid reflux or heartburn kind of feeling with it. Sticks and straw away. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I want to finish earlier than normal today and go lay up a little bit, because, yeah, I don't feel so good. Not just the headaches. The headache, is, I know, is from the weather changing, but... The other feeling, the, the gross icky feeling that I'm building, might be from the nachos yesterday. Normally, they go down a treat. And Shy felt okay this morning, so... All things considered, you know, getting up early for work, but... Yeah... We need to make money. That's all there is to it, really, isn't it? One of the things I could sell is buckets, but I need all the logs for now. But, you know what? I'm going to turn these four logs into planks, and I'm going to make some buckets to sell. That'll do. I think it's two planks per bucket, so this should get us four bucket. uh... Get two planks per log, don't we? Yeah. There's two planks per bucket. We can get four buckets. Yeah. Maybe I should turn the rest of the sticks into baskets. The... Uh, the, the woodshed? 
is getting us so many sticks. Here as well. They're generating so many sticks, it's ridiculous. 64 sticks. And do we have any leathers still? 15 leather. Oh, perfect. Turn all those into bags. A little bit of crafting. Here's what we do. Raise some money. And... Uh, Multiple. Raise some money, and we can buy a few more schematics. This, this looks okay for now, but what's really going to sell this place is putting things like fences and such in. You'd be surprised how that, like, has an effect, making the place look good. Um... Let's go put all this crap away. I need to eat. So, small wicker baskets. Oh, the buckets are already there. Simple bags. That's what we made. Okay, cool. And eat food while we're here. Eat with gravy. Grab two potage. Stew's not. Still six mushroom soup left. Get this kitchen done. Just needed logs. I could have actually finished the kitchen, come to think. It was one, two, three, four logs, and I just turned them into buckets. Well, that's okay. We'll go do some trading next day, and our guy over here, he will generate plenty of logs. In fact, I might rebalance this and say... We're getting, we're drowning in sticks. We don't need that many sticks. I need logs. Bring all the logs to me. I don't need you turning any of them into planks, though. I will turn them into planks when I need them. Actually, no, we probably... No, I guess I can still turn them into planets. Uh, right. Do we have anything else we can do? So yeah, the house is going to go there. What's our building cap? Got a couple more buildings. We're at 30. When we finish those next two buildings... Actually, no, we need two more. So we're going to need a smithy. This would be useful kitchen and a workshop. Can we build the extra uh, the extraction shed? So no excavation shed, that's it. These guys will get us uh, stones and clay. Herbalist hut. Hmm. Don't think we really need that right now. Do any of the services? So I guess it's really going to come down to just having a bunch of houses. Some of these houses plotted out. Come on. Oh, you'll fit in here somewhere. There you go. The house here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Not a lot of clearance behind each other. I was kind of expecting a little bit more. Well, I might not be able to actually put a another house in there. I was thinking. Doesn't look as though it's gonna give me anything. No. I'm gonna have to do that the other house way back here, I suppose. But like 
this maybe This can be kind of like a, a yard. Somebody. One of these guys that can claim this is their patch of land or something. Shared garden between them. A couple more houses to build. That's cool. We did set this house way back off of the path. Well, because I kind of want to give them a front garden. It's a nice house. It's a, it's a you know... Crappy houses for peasants. <laughs> That's gonna be the nice house. That's gonna be my house. That's the mayor's house. That is. And now, sleep till morning. All right. Do I have anything in here that needs to get moved still? All well, the stuff, but I'm also saving coin up. In here, we, we have plenty of coins saved for tax, so that's a good thing. Uh, I am going to take a couple of... Oh, do you know what we could do today? I'm going to save the game before we actually go and... To, um, he should go and talk to Alwyn. Sambor can wait a while. Alwyn, well, he can wait as well, but... I do want to do this quest. So when we go to Gostovia, sell a bunch of stuff, grab our trade goods, buckets, dried meat, eggs and baskets. And off we go. Somehow I fit all that into that tiny little backpack. I'm going to go to Gostovia. We'll talk to Alwyn. There's also a quest available in that town. Is there one across the... There is one in Boroo as well. But we're going to see what the person in Gustovia wants first. Doing those every now and then is good because they can teach you uh, as a reward, like some technologies, or they can uh, just give you money, which is always nice. And Dynasty Reputation, which I don't really know what Dynasty Reputation does. It's supposed to gatekeep people, but... Honestly, I find that most people are willing to join. I've rarely ever encountered people who are like, Nah, I'm not going to join your uh, crappy little town. Because you don't have enough reputation. You seem to overcome that hurdle very quickly. Like, you'll encounter that at the start of the game. If you go and build two houses and do nothing else, then go talk to people and say, Do you want to join my town? They'll say no. But then you do a few quests, including the main quests, and your reputation goes up a few minutes, and they're like, okay, now I'll join. And that's it. That seems to be the sum total of the... Uh... A nice day as well. You know, in, like, for real as well, autumn is my favorite time of year. It really is. I love the colors of autumn. Back in the UK, when I used to go to the country park close to where I lived, it was always nicest at autumn. I mean, spring was good as well. Things were starting to slowly but surely green up. I used to go there like maybe once a week and see the slow change taking place and how quickly everything came alive. But then autumn would roll around and I'd be like, yeah, this is my stuff, I like this. And now that I'm here in Canada, Going down into the ranch park, like, in September, early September, uh, the leaves were starting to yellow on some of the trees uh, down in the grove at the bottom end of the ranch. And I just happened to be walking through there one day when there was just a gentle enough breeze to bring the leaves down in, like, slow fall of leaves that was just constant. And it was kind of nice, you know, like, really peaceful feeling. Yeah, this, this is my favourite time of year, and it's pretty nice in the game as well. Yeah, so this guy here um, is all twos and ones. I don't really care about him. Just 
speak to Unagos today. I do, however, to speak to a vendor of some sort. Oh. Oh, hey! Actually, this is the specialist vendor. How can I help you? Only the best products here. They're back here, so they sell all these little. I can't remember if I've shown these guys before. They sell all these little, um, you know, gifts, I guess you could call them, that you can give to people, but by God, look how expensive they are. <laughs> wow. But they usually have a lot of coin, so it's nice to be able to sell to them. Not selling my mead, that's mine. Simple bags, that was it, I think, right? Now we're up to 545 gold. Yep. Cool. See you soon. Now we need to go find Alwyn. I wonder if you would pronounce his name Alwyn or Alvin. Like, is it one of those W's that you pronounce like a V? At the dialect here? Because Unagost... Uh, sorry, uh, Unagost tells us the name of the uncle was... Um, Jordan, but looks like it's spelled with an L. Hello, Alwyn. Alwyn, talk to me, bro. Wow, he's not even looking at me. He's like he's pissed at me or something. He's like, <clears throat> leave me alone. So, yeah, I don't know. So, what's new with you? You look different. Where's your hat? I've been thinking a lot lately about what I want to do with my life and what I truly desire, and I want to try something new. I would like to learn how to shoot a bow. It's a serious life decision. For me, it is. Would you help me find a hunter who sells bows? I don't know what awaits along the trail, and you clearly know how to survive on the road. You like the smell of spring, the heat of summer, and the colours of autumn, the hospitality of winter. Now tell me where to get all of that. <laughs> yeah, well, can we have all that in one Can we have a fifth season where we just combine all of those things? That would be great. So, an unexpected journey, you say? Count me in. Great, lead the way. Uh, we can ask uh, Falibor where the hunter exactly resides. Let's go then. Right, this is the storyline I was talking about before. The guy now fucking follows you. So, come and do this story when you've got nothing else to do. We need to let our um, woodshed, for instance, build up a store of wood so that we can start building the houses and move people into the town. Well, we have one already spare, but I'd like to build better houses now. So we need a lot of resources. Instead of a handful of sticks, we need more logs, because I'm going to make log balls. So we need to go see Falibor over in Borowowowowo. So let's go to Borowowo. Ho ho ho. Because he will not leave you alone. You can run, like, fucking... Lose him! Lose him among the trees, but no, he stays with you. <laughs> uh, he'll be like, okay, aha! I'm hiding. Nope, found you! Fuck. Okay, fine. Damn it. Now, if I remember, maybe it's going to be a different place each time you play the game, but I'm pretty sure we had to go over here once before with this guy. That was very... because it was like night time almost, and I was, you know, like, doing a bunch of other stuff, and I had a full inventory. Just about. And this guy was like, yeah, I'm going to follow you now until we find someone who sells bows. I'm like, dude, you can have this one. <laughs> He's like, nah, I want my own. Fifth season, The Equilibrium. Uh, what a movie or a fantastic book, book title, yes. Actually, that would, that would be pretty good, I'd watch that. The fifth season. Hi there, Falibor. Don't mind me barging into your home while you stand on your bed. Some time ago, you mentioned a certain hunter who bows for sale. Could you tell us where to find them? Yes, however, it's not a him but a her. The hunter's name is Gisela. 
She lives far to the west in Lesnica. Yep, okay. So we do have to go there. I guess she's a fixed character. All right, take care in the forest and on the roads. I warn you though, Gisela has quite a temper. Yeah, we'll watch our back. Thanks for the advice, uh, Alwyn. 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 How can I help you? Uh, you could fucking move a little bit. That would be a start. Okay, Inga, out you go. All right, Alwyn, follow me. Oh, sorry, Inga. I do like that. I like that the developers have added a feature where you can tell somebody, like an NPC, to move. <laughs> Could you move a little bit, please? And they step away, because like, they can block doorways sometimes and be very, very annoying. Uh, oh, I didn't pick up the quests. Damn. All right, maybe next time. We should go and do this. We've got a long journey. We have to take this guy all the way to Lesnica. So, what's a good route? Um... We should go back through the town and up to Denica, probably. I guess we could follow the pathway around. I'm just wary that up in the hills there might be bears or wolves. So... Well, we'll be cautious. We'll keep an eye out. You hear that, Alwyn? Keep an eye out for wolves and bears. And lions and tigers. You know... All that other shit. And hey, Alwyn, you get to see my village. It's pretty sweet. why I couldn't just give him a bow though. I guess he wants one made by someone who's like a well-known hunter. Which yeah, I guess makes sense. I can respect that. Hear the sound of snowblowers outside. Looks like it stopped again, yeah. Yep. So, groundskeepers are going to be uh, busy for the afternoon, I guess. Is this... Uh, no, that's the one we found. Is that a new cart? <laughs> You'd be the one, Dev, that... Oh, move request. Roll RNG. Multiplied by 0 0.005, return stubborn Brad, no. Hmm. Yeah. They'd be like, no, you move. Hey, Captain America. You know. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, if I ever got into game development, what kind of things would I do to mess with players? <laughs> and I've always said, I'd put... Like, I'd, you'd start the game, typically, like, you hear the beginning of the level, cool. And then if you turn around, and you kind of take a moment to look, you will find, like, a hidden little alcove. Or something, somewhere. And inside there would be the best weapon in the game. <laughs> right at the very beginning of the game. That would be a reward for not going the way the developer tells you to go. Because games usually always try to lead you in a certain direction, and you'll notice when I play these type of games, I go the other way first. I'm like, what's over here? And then I'm going to come back. And I'd reward people for that. You know? I'd be like, well done. You found a cool item. But maybe not always. Sometimes maybe not. Or it would be the best weapon in the game, but it would have a durability of one. You get to use it once. <laughs> And it breaks. And then it's like, you'll find this again somewhere else in the world. It will also have a durability of one. <laughs> you know, I'd reward them every time for, like, finding something at the beginning of every new level, but you only get to use it once. Until later in the game when it becomes a permanent unlock. That would really, like, I think piss people off. Oh boy. Would they be mad. Yes, they would. It's a 
just check. Is he? Yep, he's still with me. Sticking with me like a bad smell. Hey, Zaras, hello. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> so I hope you're feeling better than I am. Just chilling. Nice. Yeah, it's nothing serious though. It's, it's the weather changed overnight, and uh, the pressure changes left me with a really storming headache for the day. It's eased a bit because I ate some food, had some tea, and swallowed two headache tablets. But uh, it doesn't want to go completely. But I also feel kind of queasy for some reason. That's not because of the weather change. I think the queasy is from uh, uh, from maybe the nachos we had last night is weird I can't imagine why it's normally they turn out fine and they were tasty but still but yeah I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be going much longer like I set the stream for today normally we finish at 2 30 so that's like two hours from just over two hours from now sending good vibes thank you appreciate it hey all the good vibes that's a cool dancing emote I like that I need to get some animated emotes sorted out for this channel, but I go. I'm way behind on stuff like that since I moved out here. But I see you guys didn't game yesterday either, uh, since I cancelled out. We had some adulting to do yesterday. We ended up going through all our tax record stuff and putting a, a pack together for... Um... Ooh. Ooh, look at this place. Uh, putting a pack together for the uh, accountants, which Shy's taken to work with her today. People she works for are going to do our taxes for us, so... Yay, taxes indeed. Clay and stone and a shovel. Um, I'll take the shovel, but I don't want to weigh myself down with tons of clay. So we're going to come down to this and then go that way, yeah? Yeah, look at this place. This would have made a nice area for a settlement as well. Look at that. With the mountain view. Could have built up on that top there. That leads all the way down to that lake. And there's clay pits over here, so it's not bad. That a lynx. I think it was a lynx. Yeah, it's a lynx. It's really. I know deeper into the map you go, you encounter wolves and bears. And you guys know me and bears in video games. You still want to make the flowing concept of a oh wolf. Oh, okay, yeah, we spotted wolves. Oh, my character has spotted wolves. I, on the other hand, am oblivious to them because I don't know where they are. Let's cut through. Good. Another cart. But yeah, you still want to make a concept of a game uh, delivered on old school DVD twist, pressed from a golden master, but with an empty DVD-R track at the end. First launch of the game, it asks you to select a random file from your PC that gets written onto the track, and uh, you obtain a permanently unique version of the game. Wow, that would be pretty cool, actually. Like a permanent random seed, yeah. A stick. There's a small bundle. Mead! Yes, please. How does it look like there's also a torch there? Hmm, it's not. Oh, Vicent. There are bison over here, look. Big beefy boys. Excellent. Speaking of beefy, I should eat my meat with gravy because I'm hungry. Otage as well, because I'm still hungry. 
and I should take a drink of my water skin, which is nearly empty, and now it is. Sorry, did you want a, a drink too, Alwyn? You can't have one. This is my water. You should have brought your own. First rule about survival on the road, my bro. Bring your own food and water. I ain't got none for you. Oh, wow. Look at this logging camp. Okay, I will grab these free logs. I'm probably going to weigh the shit out of myself, though. Stone axe. I'll keep that as well. Anything else? Supplies. Wheat beer. Okay, cool. But yeah, that, that would be a very cool idea you're into. I do like that. Put a cart down there. We're finding all the loots and goodies. What is this? A straw hat? I'll take a spare straw hat. More apples. Quite literally somebody, uh, you know, upturned the apple cart, so to speak. Alright. Keep on going. We are... most of the way out. And it's already... <laughs> Almost the end of the day. Alwyn, you have taken up my whole fucking day with this quest. I swear to God, bro. Better be worth it. Dude wants a bow. I have a spare one I could give him. Apparently spotting wolves again. Oh. Scared we're going to get mauled by wolves and we're going to lose all this time. Is that the way to go? This is the way to go. That's Lesnica over there. Brock Lesnica. See a badger. Yeah, I don't think I want to go back that way. <laughs> I'm going to go back this way, I think. I'm going to go back via Rolnica. Or maybe even just go out there. I guess we should have done this. I went all this way. We should have just done this. I'm going to go back that way. That's probably more peaceful. Follow the river. Barrels of supplies. While we're here, drink some water. And I'm going to whip my water skin and fill it. Alright, put the game in a DVD-ROM first, um, it's hints that you, uh, due to insufficient resources, the game isn't fully done yet. Nice. And of course, it should be some kind of big open world RPG, right? Maybe part of the randomizer would also be... Um, it changes the genre. Is it a fantasy game? Is it a uh, stealth action game? An, uh, is it a cyberpunky type of game? Ooh, this guy's got production and extraction and hunting. All three. Uh, cool. Anyway, let's go find the hunter. Is this... The place it is. Hi, Gisela. What do you want? My friend, Alwyn, would like to buy a bow. Your friend loses tongue? No, of course not. I'm just more of a talker. Both get on my nerves instantly. You're a perfect match, no doubt. Now, let's quit the jabber, lads, and get to the point. Show us the wares. Good, now you're hitting the right note. Let's make a deal. Alright. Oh my... God, Alwyn, stop blocking the fucking doors! Oh, I guess I'll have to go back and change clothes now. She seemed annoyed and probably didn't kill anything in a long time, or anyone. She's intimidating, probably eats the bears for breakfast. Well, you already have a bow, experience will come with time. Take this and a, it's a, f uh, and a few arrows from my recent acquisition. Thanks again for helping me. Anytime. Now, fucking get away from the door, bro. Locking the doorway every time. 
So we got a smithy out here. Right. A newcomer. My wares never disappoint. This guy also sells bows. And all the other really cool implements. So yeah, but I mean, for instance, if I wanted... What do we want? Let's just say an axe, a copper axe, 270. That's a lot of money just for a copper axe that will eventually break. Iron arrows, 19.5 per arrow, 735 for an iron axe. Jesus. Horseshoes. Don't tell me I need to actually use horseshoes with any horses I buy. Oh my god. A uh, copper sickle. Yeah. But... Well, we did plant wheat, so we will need it in a couple of seasons, probably. Is this the right way out? Yeah. I'm gonna leave this way. Alwyn is fine walking back on his own, apparently. He needed me to hold his hand to get here. Now, it's good. So like I said, that particular quest feels like you need to spend a whole day doing it. I know there are some later on as well where you, um, you basically have to travel to far-flung uh, corners of the map. Hopefully by then we'll have a mount. They're blocking the bridge. I ain't got time to screw around with bandits. I'm gonna cross the river down here. Oh no, they're blocking the bridge. How will we ever get across the river now? Oh dear. Oh, splish, splosh, splish, splosh. Oh, look at that, I crossed the, uh, the bridge. Wow. I guess all was not lost on that day. That is the first time I've seen them actually blocking a bridge though, that's pretty cool. I've seen them camping on the roadsides, but not blocking a bridge. Just to note the idea that something that you own which is otherwise a mass-produced item gets modified to be unique. Yeah! Yeah, it's, it's a, that's a very cool idea, because then I mean, God, can you imagine as well the used game market around a game like that would, like, that would stimulate the shit out of it, right? Because then people would be like, you know, once you finish playing it, what if you wanted to play that same game but somebody else's variant? And, you know, you could, you trade them like collector's cards. Yes, and one of the best of them has the best item behind you. Exactly. That would be pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest, I was tempted to start hurling arrows at those bandits. Maybe we should come back during the day. We haven't spent most of the daylight already. And, uh... Take pot shots at them from across the river. I already looted this one, yeah. Yeah, I will have looted that once before. I'd like to get, um... Better arrows as well to deal with them. 
so how expensive those can be. Cut across here, actually. That's the path we need to be on. So I'm sticking to the paths because it's just kind of easier without getting lost. Light over here. Oh, it's like a shaft of moonlight, maybe, coming through the trees? Okay. Ah. I was like, why does it look like there's light over there? What have I found? Like, the Holy Grove or something? Nearly home. We've still got a few days left in autumn. Um, got our first farm down. We'll need to maybe make another field to be able to plant the carrot. So we've already put the uh, the like space out. Like we've already spaced out the field. Uh, like set aside an area for it. So we just need to actually mow it up and fertilize it and plow it and. Get ready to sew it. Dark. It's be a one-way check-in valve uh, that whatever you put in, it gets transformed so you can't retrieve the original input file in case it's something personal. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. All right. Here. Should be good for food and stuff, so sleep till the next day. And the weather outside. Okay, it's foggy, but okay. All right. Well, we helped Alwyn. We got him a bow. I think. Need to wait. Oh no, we can talk to him. We have to wait till the next day. We can go and talk to him now. And we'll get 20 copper arrows. That would be good. Unagos, we need to go speak to Sambor again. And there are a couple of other little uh, quests around, and we have 10 buildings, we need to build 15. And then when we do that, our building limit goes up to 40. That's quite nice. That's a very nice... I don't think I've had 40 buildings in a uh, in a town, even in my own personal... Idea, uh, personal thing. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I know it's a couple of hours early, but I need to go rest up. I think I need to go lay down and have a nap because I still feel really rough.